Oh, that pains me to look at. Why are some board game boxes so beaten up? The more battered a board game box is, the better the game is. I'm going to choose the 10 most battered board games in my collection to see if there's a correlation between where and the quality of the game here on Legendary Tactics. You may judge me for the shape these boxes are in, but there are very good reasons that they look this way. I should tell you up front that I generally take very good care of my games. I enter Exhibit A. We'll begin with number, number 10, 10, Midway. This is a classic Avalon Hill game from 1964. It's certainly not an amazing game, and though it brings back some nostalgia, the reason it's so battered is that it's been hanging around my closet for about 35 years. Number 9, Cosmic Encounter. This is one of the best games ever made. It's also the game that gets to the table more often than any other game in my collection. The cause of damage, massive playtime, and careless friends. This one definitely supports my theory. Number eight, Survive, Escape from Atlantis. This is without a doubt the best game I played when I was a kid. Even today, its design is really clever. It looks like this because I've had it for 35 years, and I can say that it's just as fun to play with my own kids as it was to play when I was a kid. Cause of damage, age, and awesomeness. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of video, don't forget to like and subscribe to it. We really appreciate any support that you can offer. Number seven, Liar's Dice. This game has been around since 1800 and I don't actually remember when it joined my collection. I'm not entirely sure why I still have it in the cupboard because it's really not that great and all you really need to play are a lot of dice. So cause of death, value village. In fairness, it did only cost me a dollar and 99 cents. Number six, men's. Men's is a game that never gets played Heck, I can't even find it on the Board Game Geek, but it's one that was passed down from our Dutch grandmother, so it will continue to stay in the collection. You probably know this game as Sorry. Cause of damage? Well, it's ancient. Number five, Box of Games. What collection's complete without a box of classics like chess and checkers? The pieces are still in decent shape, but the box has been kicked around and also rarely used. It mostly lives in the basement. I play chess, just not with this version of it. Cause of damage? Carelessness. Number four, Axis and Allies. This game got tons of playtime back in the 90s, not so much recently. The box is really ungainly and it gets crushed under all the other games. The contents don't actually fill the box, they only go about halfway up, so the lid has started to cave in. Cause of damage, it's really old and it's an oversized box. Number three, Rummy Cub. This is another hand-me-down, but unlike men's, this is one that still gets a lot of play. It's a great family game, and you know what that means. Kids. So the little plastic legs are broken, the box has some sort of weird fungus on it, likely from some spilled juice, and the game is super old. Not an ideal combination for preserving a game. Number two, Bridget. Honestly though, is it better for these games to sit in a cupboard, not getting played, and staying in mint condition? I think not, and that goes for the game Bridget as well. This is a 60 year old game, and this box holds tons of memories, and it's still really simple and really fun. This is one that I really regret how much it's damaged. You really can't find a game like this anymore. But a combination of age and lots of play across four generations has resulted in this. Number one, Hungry Hungry Hippos. Well, my theory has completely fallen apart. The most damaged game box in my collection is Hungry Hungry Hippos, and it's not a great game, you know that. So kids plus a box that doesn't really fit the hippos plus more kids equals this. So if we look at the data, we see that I still love and play only five games on this list. But the deadly combination appears to be more connected to simply age with an outside forecast of children. I think we've all learned two important lessons here though. Every one of these boxes did their job protecting their contents, the games are mostly in good shape, and though the games might suck, at least it got the protection it deserved. 
The second lesson, well, though my original hypothesis was completely wrong, to my notebook, I'm adding the possibility that there's a strong correlation between the amount of tape on a box and the quality of a game. So if you don't mind, check your own collection to see what game has the most tape on it, and kindly let me know in the comments if it's also a really great game.